Reaching financial independence and early retirement can seem impossible, but honestly, it, it's not. I was able to leave my day job at 24. I know tons of people who've been able uh, to leave their jobs in their 20s and 30s, and it's because of some simple rules of financial independence that we follow. So if you're trying to reach financial independence and early retirement, here are some rules for investing that won't make you rich quick, but will make you rich for sure. Never spend the principal. Unlike when you're saving money that you're probably saving for some reason to spend on something, when you're investing, you never actually want to touch the principal, the money that you're investing. You kind of want to pretend that it doesn't exist anymore. And here's why. Once you invest a dollar, you look at that dollar as gone. You're not going to buy a house with it. You're not going to buy a coffee with it. It is gone forever. But what you can buy a coffee with, it might take a while if you, if you only invest a dollar, because when you're trying to reach financial independence and early retirement, you need to have enough money that is working for you that you can live off the money that that money makes indefinitely. Like real quick, we can use kind of the 4% rule as a guideline. Let's say you need $40,000 a year to live off of, you would need to have a million dollars invested. And if that's earning 4%, that would generate enough money that you could never touch the principal and you could live off of the interest from that indefinitely. So you could still have money coming in, but you don't actually spend a lump sum. And this is kind of what I've done with rentals where I have invested my life savings into buying rentals. And then I can spend some of that money that it brings in every month. But when I eventually sell my rentals, I'm gonna flip that into buying another bigger, better rental. I'm never actually gonna take that money back out and spend it on myself. Instead, that money is gonna keep growing and compounding and earning me more money pretty much indefinitely. Rule number two, always invest your returns. When you invest money, whether it's into the stock market or real estate or a, a business, whatever it is, it can be really tempting to, once you make some money, take that out, spend it on yourself, buy a nice pair of shoes or a house, depending on how much you make. But if you are bound and determined to reach financial independence as soon as possible, leave your day job and just start chilling on a beach, then you need to reinvest everything that you're earning. So this is what I've done with my rental properties. I put my initial money into them. And then for instance, this property makes me about $1,000 a month. However, I've never touched a dollar of that money. Instead, it builds up in a new account. And then eventually I used that money to buy my second property. And then I did the exact same thing with that one. And then I used the money those two made to buy my third property. And then eventually in another year or two, I'll take all the money that those have made and I'll buy the next property. But if I had never done that on the first property, I wouldn't get to have these other ones and I would still have a day job and it would, it would, it would, I, I'm not a good employee. That would not have ended well. Rule number three is that you actually need money to, to start investing. I mean, that's kind of obvious, but this is why earning and then saving what you're earning is super important before you start getting uh, too deep into investing. Whether you're investing in real estate or the stock market, you need to actually have money to start investing. By the way, if you are thinking about getting into investing, I did just make a free course, which is kind of like investing uh, 101 with the stock market. There's a link down below, it's free, you can check it out. You can also check out Webull to get up to 12 free stocks, but that's not really the point. But in order to start any type of investing, you really shouldn't be doing it with just a little bit of money unless you're just practicing. Instead, you should be focusing uh, on earning more and then being extremely frugal, cutting down your expenses as much as possible by doing things like lowering your biggest three expenses, which is generally housing, transportation, and food. Uh, there's a lot of creative ways that you can do that that we don't need to get into in this video. But even with earning, it's not really about how much you earn, it's about how much you keep. Uh, so being frugal is a huge aspect and a huge part of being financially independent and investing because if you don't really have a decent amount of money, it's going to be hard to turn that into anything that is life changing. If you're only investing with a few thousand dollars, it's going to be extremely hard. Before we get into kind of the meat of these rules, I want to tell you about the sponsor of today's video, Free Tax USA. They always offer free federal tax returns which is amazing and it's only $14.99 for state returns, for state filings, including customer support, tax extensions, and all major tax situations. It's also free to import your previous tax filings so you can pick up with them right where you left off with the last guy. It's just gonna be cheaper and easier. They are also one of the only companies to provide free federal self-employed filings, which is like a value of like a hundred bucks. Honestly, they're super simple to use with e-filings and direct deposits. You can get your tax return faster. Their website just guides you through each area of your taxes, helping you get the biggest refund possible, which who doesn't want that? So check out freetaxusa.com or check out the link down in the description. Don't try to control returns unless you can actually 
control returns. Uh, this is why I'm not huge on picking individual stocks because even if you pick uh, a, a good stock, sometimes you can't control what that company will do, what their management will do. You can't control the economy. And while it does definitely work out for some people, you really have to spend an insane amount of time uh, understanding stuff and then trying to beat the market. And even if you can beat it, uh, it, it, it's just extremely hard to do that. And that's why I like focusing on investments that I can actually control. Like when I bought my rentals, I could fix them up and add value to them, increase the rents by providing a, a better place to live for people. And in return, I can make more money. And the same thing uh, when you buy a business or you invest in uh, yourself and starting your own business or any one of the, the other tons of ways that you can invest. A lot of times we put in so much time and effort into picking individual stocks that we're putting a couple hundred dollars into, when in reality, we'd be better off just picking index funds and focusing on trying to control returns that we can actually control. It's really all about what's in your garage knowledge. For real though, if you talk to uh, pretty much any uh, investor, you can really change how much you're making by uh, really learning about whatever area you're investing into. I'm going to stick with real estate because this is what I know, which kind of goes along with this point. Because I was a real estate agent, because I listened to uh, like 15 books on real estate and I looked at a couple thousand different properties, I can really understand the market in my local town. And therefore, I can see and create opportunities that other people without this knowledge cannot see or create. And you can do that with any field. I can do that with YouTube. Because I became an expert in one small field, I can create more opportunity for myself and create better returns in that field because of my knowledge, because I studied that one little niche. For everybody, this is gonna be completely different, but you can actually go from earning 8% to earning 20% or 30 or 50 or 100% by using your knowledge and leveraging that into investing in better places. Like, like this is why I was so excited about house hacking. After I invested $15,000 into my first property, and then after I moved out, I started earning $1,000 a month from that property. I pretty much got my money back inside of a year, and then I just earned an infinity ROI by learning something that most people don't know, which is how to house hack. That also required delayed gratification, doing something scary, saving up money, and most of the other rules that we've been talking about. Don't confuse risk with volatility. Now, this is something that stops most people from doing a lot of things, but especially investing, whether it's real estate or stocks or starting a business, they're worried about risk. And I completely understand that. I think like as humans, we are extremely risk averse because we see other people fail. We don't wanna fail. We don't wanna be embarrassed. We don't wanna lose all of our money. We worked really hard for it. It's scary. But there's a difference between volatility and risk. If you look at the market over the past 100 years, it's gone up and down and up and down and up and down. And if you are following along with that market and getting really excited when it goes up and freaking out when it goes down and trying to sell before it hits the bottom and then you'll just buy back at the bottom and ride the high, which seems to make sense logically, but it's almost impossible to do, you're gonna have a rough time. But if you understand that, yes, the stocks will will go up and down. The value of my property will go up and down. The views on my YouTube channel will go up and down. But if you zoom back and you look at the long term, it's gone up. While nothing is for certain, it, it's probably uh, going to go up, especially with inflation the way it is right now. And I also like to take a look at this kind of a different way that uh, not putting money into any type of investment and leaving it in the bank and getting eaten away by inflation, while that is not taking a risk, it is a risk because you're like guaranteeing bad things to happen because you are scared of taking a risk. But if you don't take any risk, you don't deserve any reward. And that's really the, the basis of all investing, starting any business of investing in any stock, uh, of buying any real estate of whatever it is. If you don't put anything into it, you don't deserve anything out of it. And you can make investments safer by learning about them, by knowledge, by the other rules that we talked about. But you really need to expect it to go up and down because it definitely will. And you're thinking long term, you're not thinking next year, you're thinking 10 years from now. So you shouldn't really be sweating it that much. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. You can also check out my free course, uh, kind of investing 101. Also, thank you to Free Tax USA for sponsoring this video.